This is actually kind of part two here of the Timucuan Ecological and Historic Preserve. We already did Fort Caroline. Now this is part two where we're doing the Kingsley Plantation. It is Sunday, October 9th, 2022. You guys know what to do. Grab yourself a tasty treat and a beverage of your choice and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside this vlog at all times. I'm trying to have a little bit of a picnic and then I'll be turning it over to Mark to do the majority of the kind of historical walk and talk. Christina wanted me to get out because she has a friend. And here comes the other friend. You're beautiful. Hi. Oh, don't get in the car, honey. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Teddy's asleep too. What are you doing? Hi, beautiful. You are precious. Hi, I don't have anything for you, sweetheart. Oh my gosh. Hi. It's important to note that here at Kingsley Plantation, they have attacked peacocks that want to get in the car and eat your bread. Or whatever you're eating, actually. All right, we're gonna have lunch. All right, we've arrived at Kingley, Kingsley Plantation at our picnic with our peacocks. So, brochures, it doesn't look like there's any in there, but this is plantation, so let's go tour it. Done this once before. Usually always rain is coming. So, Usually I'm in a dead rush to get it done. So it's kind of cool that there isn't a cloud, a storm cloud in the sky. So, awesome. That's the gardens. They do have an audio tour that you can get from the visitor center that's here. <clears throat> it's free. And it lasts for about an hour and it goes all around the plantation. I think you have to leave your license or something like that, so we'll go check it out. So the walkway to the left of the, of the plantation building, the main building, will lead you down to the visitor center, the restrooms if you need it, and lovely view of the marsh, salt marsh, St. John's River. Probably didn't have those in plantation days. So I learned you have two ways you can do this audio tour. They have an audio device you can you can get. It's free charge. You can use through here, or you can download it. Not download it. You can uh, pull up the app. They have a Q reader here, and it takes you right to it. And you look for these spots. This is stop number one. It gives you an introduction. It's the time is set from, I think it said early 1800s, like 1819 to 1838. And you go through the people that would have lived here. Uh, Zebediah Kingsley is the owner. And of course this is a, a plantation, it's a slave plantation for cotton. And so we're gonna hear from all those involved. And uh, it says keep an open mind and uh, see what we see. Our next stop is that bench that's over by that tree at stop number two. So come along, let's see what we find out. So the video is called The Lion Storyteller. And it just states, this would be your road into your house. Your house, if you own this property. 
was right behind you. Right there. The Atlantic Ocean is off in that direction. And the river goes further up. We're on St. George Island. So this would have been your front yard. And it talks about, imagine if it was your front yard. What would you see? You know, you have, you have a boat dock that would have been located there where friends would roll up come and visit or and around the corner it talked there was another dock where all the supplies would come in for the plantation this plantation growed cotton and it growed indigo and then it talked about slavery and that they had slaves but sometimes things aren't as they seem what you think you know about slaveholding and so Zebediah was a white man that bought this property. He was a slave trader before that. He was married to Anna Kingsley, who was a, one of his slaves. He had bought her when she was 13 years old. Five years later, he emancipated her and she was free. He was no longer his property, but she ran this plantation with him. And in his absence, she ran this plantation. Next stop is up on top of the porch. Here we are standing in front of the main house. And it talks about Zephariah and that he was a conflicted man. In one side, he believed in a very paternal system here. He believed that he owed his slaves affection. Uh, and as they were part of your family, but he also believed they were property and that they were there to make you money. And so there was always a balance with him. And as a matter of fact, when they finally moved away from here and actually went to Haiti, he freed some of them, but he did state that you can't have, you can't do good without money. So in a lot of ways, he's very conflicted and he has, you know, slaves running this place and as it says imagine sitting in this house your bread is your food is made by slaves your house is cleaned by slaves um, your cotton your money is made by slaves so uh, it's a, it, he's very conflicted as the tape says and now it says move on to a well and we'll see more Whoop. some more notes of the house um, it's very well constructed. The basement is coquina, so it's going to be, it's going to last. Um, wide windows to let in the breeze. Wide porches. It's very well constructed for the time. You're talking 18, 17, 18, 18. Somebody is up from his nap, so we're going out to try to find Mark. And Teddy's getting his first real look at the peacocks. What do you think, honey? <laughs> what do you think? That's a peacock, honey. Oh, it's way doing that. I don't know. What do you think of those? Are they colorful? What do you think? You're taking pictures too? Yeah? I'm gonna have to get you another camera, huh? Another camera. Yeah. So the next stop is the outside of the kitchen. And this was the kitchen to the main house. It talks about how Zephyrin in this plantation were different than most things. Zephyrin believed in polygamy. Anna came from a place in Africa that believed in polygamy as well. So, Zephram had four wives. Anna would be the first, so she'd be the most prominent, and she actually stayed in this house that is the kitchen, below it. And she would have a bigger role than the other wives. Uh, she actually would run the plantation, but each wife would have a separate residence, and Zephram would live in the house by himself. Now they had four, him and Anna had four kids, all mulatto, but 
Zephyrin had all his family here, sisters, cousins, all that. They had white children. So it said you, if you pictured yourself looking out in this field, the, you know, all types of hues that would be playing together. And the role of some of the other wives were to teach these children that lived here on the plantation. So it was, a, and eventually there was a lot of uh, slaves set free from Zephyrin and his beliefs. So it's a very different view of slavery. Not that it's right, but it is what it was at that time. And it's just interesting how different it is than the typical antebellum slavery. Yeah, you're a slave and you're just stuck there. It's, it's interesting. So Mark has been out here doing the tour. Teddy wanted to take a little snooze. Took his snooze, got up and had his lunch. Now we're getting ready to take our little stroll. I haven't been strolling these grounds since you were in my tummy, Teddy. You're currently inside the kitchen. In this room, the walls and floor are made of tabby. The peep in is a fire detector that beeps every once in a while. Now on to the next stop, which is Anna's room. It is a starfish. So while Mark is still filming, we came up to use the restroom and now we're in the visitor center. We found the touch box. Teddy likes touch boxes. And he identified starfish. Oh, it tickles. It does tickle? Yeah. It does? What else do you find in there, sweetie? Yeah. And it's like a turtle shell. Go for tortoise shell, it looks like. Oh. Let me come around on the other side of you, sweetie. What else do you find? There's all kinds of bones. Driftwood. That. That's a bone. What do you think bone. it comes from? Yeah. Oh, easy with it, honey, because you could poke yourself. Easy. So we're in Anna's parlor, and it's showing what an awful thing it was when slaves were taken from Africa, and they were grabbed off their villages, and they were put in shackles like this, and they were driven in boats, loaded like that. And it also goes on to talk about Anna, and it actually has a voice of a slave of hers that was in charge of taking care of her, doing her laundry and doing all this. But she talks about how she does everything that the, Miss Anna asked her to do and never questions. Because if you do, you won't sleep for a week mainly you'll be whipped. And so it's speculating about how do we view Anna? Do we give her pity because she was a slave and she rose out of being a slave, became a free person and now runs part of this plantation? Or do we hold her to a higher standard? It's a good question. What would you do if she was white? And what would you do if she was male? How would you think? Good questions. This is just showing what one of the lower decks look like. Behind me is the kitchen. We were in it before, before we should be, so we saw it. The tabby room that we saw is the laundry room. And the tape has a story of the slave cook, whose name is Old Rose, and she's talking about how she has a baby girl that cooks with her, and she's abducted in 1812 by the Seminoles in some of the Seminole Wars, and she's lost a child, and how people in this plantation, you know, grieved with her when she lost her child. But it just shows another level. You got to be worried about everything. You know, everything that's happening here. 
can you imagine just living out? You know, see the slave quarters at the end, and living out in the slave quarters, and your child's abducted while you're cooking. She cooks every day. But you lost your child because the Seminole came in and took them. And rumor is when the Seminole take people, they don't survive. But she won't believe that. She believes her daughter is alive. And it's never said whether they did find her or not find her. Anyways, the next stop is the uh, stables. So let's go check out the stables. So now we're located outside the stable, taking a look at it. It said if you could picture in this time, you would only, this stable housed horses, carriages, uh, they'd be fixed like that. Uh, places that held the cotton, indigo, those kind of stables were out of the way. If you were looking at this back then, just to the right would have been a sugarcane mill, and then to the right of that would have been a grist mill that crushed up your corn. It also tells a story of Carpenter Bill, who was a skilled labor man that could build anything. He was a slave, but he was given time that he could go actually out and work at other plantations and actually earn a wage. He was able to pick people that can go with him. He eventually, over time, would gather enough money to free his wife, himself, and his children and be a free black slave or a free black man. But the story said that it will tell of the dangers of being a free black person at that time inside the stable. So let's go and find out what that means. So Teddy and I have been working on the Junior Ranger booklet here for this district, Kingsley Plantation, and I wanted to give that note. In a lot of times, in a lot of different parks, they do actually have different Junior Ranger booklets for uh, different sections. Wrong way, honey. We got to go back the other way. But it's wicked cute. So Teddy thinks that he did his homework. He gets his badge that he can now go to work with Mark. <laughs> so that's super cute that he wants to go help his dad at work. So we're going to go turn it so, in. So, I need you to raise your right hand. Good job. And you're going to repeat after me, okay? Uh -huh. So you're going to say, I. I. And what's your name? I'm Teddy. Mm -hmm. Promise to learn about. Promise to learn about. Explore. Up your. And protect. Protect. All national parks. All national parks. And to share what I have learned. Uh-huh. With others. <laughs> with others, honey. Good job! So behind me is the stables. And it just explained that they would, you know, it was for carriages and for horses and stuff like that. But it went on to talk more about free people. And since this was a Spanish colony, you could free yourself for half your value. Whatever your value was, if you could pay half of it, you could free yourself, but even after you were freed, it wasn't a safe place. And it had a, a gentleman by the name of Abraham that talked about how he always kept his papers in his pocket. And he, he could, he learned himself to read so he could keep up on all the new laws that were always changing. And how important it was to know the laws and how dangerous it was. And a lot of times back then, even if you freed yourself, you remained here. You got paid. Bill did. Bill stayed here for 25 years. Just because it was easier. You needed a white man to defend you. Like Zebediah. He would defend you. He was more just than what could be. And what could be could be very bad. You could simply be walking off this plantation and come across the wrong people and they would charge you just for you being black. And if you didn't have the right words or you didn't have the right papers, it was 50 lashes just for being black. That's how unjust it was. But you felt safer here because someone like Zebediah could protect you. So on to the garden. So we're out here now uh, by these gardens, I'll show you. Mark's trying to listen to the audio tour to learn about it and Teddy's just enamored with he's got to put that Junior Ranger badge on. So Mark's helping him put his Junior Ranger badge on. 
he is loving this. Um, as you might have saw in the video, he, he did put his left hand up instead of his right, but we're thinking he's left-handed. More and more and more, he does things with his left hand, so I think it's just natural to him. But he did repeat it so much better, so that was good. You and me? Well, here we are at stop 10 and 11, and it talked about the garden, and it has different things in it, like sugar cane that would have been grown here, sweet potatoes, indigo, and cotton were the main crops that would have been grown here. But it's point what? Yeah, you grow in the garden, huh? Grow Someone is sporting his new ranger badge that he just earned. Very oh, nice. Ooh. So it also talked about how, since this was Spanish run, it was a different system of how they did things. In Antebellum South, you had a gang system where you woke up at dawn and you worked to the evening and you worked like a dog the whole day. Here, with the task system that they had here on this plantation, you were given a task each day. So maybe it's plant a quarter of an acre field or maybe it's fix a mile of fence, but that was your task. You would start at sunrise and you'd go until you finished. But the gentleman that they had speaking talked about the importance of not going too fast because if you did it too fast you made the other people look bad or what happens the next day if you're not feeling too well or you've hurt a muscle and now you can't do as much or they'll give you more to do if you finish it too quick so on average they would work to about two o'clock in the afternoon and then the rest of the day was yours you go fishing you could plant your own garden or whatever you wanted to do then it went on to talk about overseers. And a matter of fact, when Zephram and Anna left here, they sold to their oldest son. They sold this property. But the law stated at that time, because now it's U.S. run, the law stated that the overseer had to be white. So actually at this plantation, you had a white overseer being controlled by a mulatto. He was the owner. He was the master. So kind of a different scenario here, and it worked very well. And it talked about how the whip was used on Antebellum South quite harshly, where here it was used, it was used if you stole something, if you tried to run away, for all these reasons, but not quite as bad as Antebellum South. But then it said go to the Tabby Pillars and see the next section, so. We're off to the tabby pillars, which are right over there, to see what we can see. Christina was, Christina was admiring the painted bunting. She liked to see one. This is stop 12. These columns. If you were on my side of the columns, the side Christina's heading to now, you'd be a free person. But on this side was the slave hole. And we're gonna take a walk down the path, down to the slave quarters. Come with me. Stop 13 is the walk down towards the slave cabins. And like every stop, it has a story. And this story is of a lady. It said you get a picture from sunrise to about 2 o'clock. This is an empty place all along here. And then after 2, people start coming back. If you came back from the north, you came from the house. The northwest, you came from the stables, and from the south, you came from the fields. And this lady came from the fields, talking about how broken her back was. She'd been picking bugs and picking cotton, and mining to 20 pounds of cotton she had to pick a day. And then she described what it was like to come back to these cabins. And that she was a certain, she was from Guinea, her husband was from someplace else, next door neighbors were someplace else. And they all had different stories and different songs. And they had, first of all, they'd come back to each house had about a quarter acre little garden out behind it where you could grow food. And she talked about how hard it was that her body was her owner's, but her mind was hers. And she had this evening to listen to this beautiful music. But in reality, every day, she had to get back up, go back out, work for the, 
for the plantation because she was a slave. It did say that these houses, slave quarters that you see, were made of coquina. They were better than the typical slave holding. They had windows, they had doors, and they were a little bit larger than normal. But they're still slave quarters. So we're going to walk down here and then walk into one and take a look. So our next stop is actually going in the slave quarters. You can see the coquina that the walls would have been made out of. Inside this small cabin, a family would have lived for over a hundred years. They lived in the cabin at a fireplace. You would have seen maybe a couple chairs, table, a week's rations. Now we're sitting outside a reproduction of the driver's house. They would be at the end of the row, as you can see behind me, the whole row of slave cabins. A driver was a slave, but he worked in the fields to keep production going. And at night, he also kept all the rules going. And so there would be four drivers, one on each side of the road, and two here. And it was talked about how difficult it was to be a driver and still be a slave. They hoped that they would be freed like everybody else. And some did and some didn't. So let's step inside and see what a driver's cottage looks like. Because a driver's cottage was bigger. They also had more freedoms, more privileges. This is a lot bigger than the regular slave cabin. His whole family would have more privileges. I gotta give it, this video is so good. Um, this last driver section talks about this lady talking about how there'll be songs tonight and they'll be able to sing, but unfortunately one gentleman, he lost his wife. No, he lost his daughter and her husband and his new grandbaby. Well, that gentleman was Carpenter Bill, who was a free man, but he could only purchase his own freedom. He couldn't afford to purchase everybody. And so his daughter, her husband, and his I don't know if it was a granddaughter or a grandson, were all shipped off to a different plantation where he never ever got to see them again. And it talks about just sit and reflect what life would be like here along the slave buildings. There'd be different type of music, different voices, different languages. And that with all the fear of lashing and working like a dog, the biggest weapon that they had was human love in that at that idea that you could lose your family and never see them again. Now I did go on to say Kingsley usually had a, a condition if he sold a slave that they would have to stay in the area. Uh, but this happened after Kingsley had left and went to Haiti. Uh, even in those cases, it was usually just for one owner. So if they sold them again, then that provision didn't stand. So there was always that fear that your loved one was going to go any day and you'd never see them again. Your daughter, your son, your wife. So now the last stop is walking back up the plantation road with some reflection. But uh, if you're ever here, in Jacksonville. I highly recommend doing this tour at Kingsley Plantation and listening to the audio tour because it's a total different perspective of slavery. Very much different than American slavery. Spanish slavery was much different. Still wrong. Very wrong. You can see by just the idea that you could lose your family just like that. But it was different and nothing I've ever really thought of. 
And it's preserved really well. The coquina buildings you see on the side of me. This whole plantation, excellent. Excellent. And take some time and reflect upon it. Now let's take that last stop and see what it is. So that last section was just the importance and importance of remembering all the stories that are here. Because all the stories they they tell you are are real stories. And the importance of the people that lived here. And that how a lot of them just died here on George Island and are buried here and will never be known where they were buried. And that the importance of not forgetting the people that worked here that made the society and no matter how just Zebediah tried to make this system of slavery it's still slavery they were still property and to remember that and learn from that that's what history is we learn from the past how things were wrong. But also to remember those people that were here. So, thanks for coming on my tour. If you're ever here, come visit this place, Kingsley Plantation. It's awesome. Open Wednesday through Sunday. Now I gotta go find my tribe and where they are, my family, wandering someplace. So, Thanks for touring with me. Catch you on the next one. And keep your stick on the ice. That is about as fast as you'll ever see a gopher tortoise go. He's speedy. I'm trying to not go so fast because I'm really zoomed in and I don't want to shake you guys up and down too much, but I don't want to disturb his peace and his space either. Gopher tortoise, I love gopher tortoises. Now, there's a picture of Teddy with the gopher tortoise. Yeah? You see him? Uh -huh. Yeah?